But in Seattle, they've got a serious issue with their team president in something that is really meant for nothing personal. Kevin Mather is the president of the Mariners. He started off as the CFO, worked for the Twins way back when. I've known him my entire 18-year career in baseball. And the Mariners and I had our issues. There's no doubt about that. After my comments about Ichiro and the contract they signed Ichiro to, and I had a few things to say, and their GM at the time, whose name I think was Bill Bavese, had some not nice things to say about me. I know that uh, Kevin Mather and I have disagreed on many things over the years, but we've also been cordial enough. When you are a team president, you've got many responsibilities. There are public-facing presidents, and there are those who don't talk much publicly. You don't have a lot of experience or practice speaking publicly, and there are those who do. And it really doesn't matter whether you've been media trained. It doesn't matter what experience you have when you're in front of the media. What matters is as president of a baseball team, a major league baseball team, especially today, but every day, you have got to choose your words carefully. I never once made a headline that I didn't want to make. I never once said anything that I didn't want to read on the front page of the paper because I assumed whenever I was talking, I was on the record because that is the first rule in media when you are a team executive or a player. The first rule we tell the guys and every one of our employees, you are on the record every time you open your mouth. We would tell our employees this, no matter what level. Actually, there was an employee who wore a Red Sox jersey to a Marlins Red Sox game. How would you feel about that, Coca? That employee was not long for the Marlins. When I was at Morgan Stanley, can you imagine walking by, having your boss walk by your desk and you're wearing a Goldman Sachs t-shirt or you work for Coke and you have a Pepsi on your desk? That's how I felt about a Marlins employee wearing a Red Sox jersey to a Marlins game. Everything you say and do is being watched and noticed and is on the record. When you're a team president, you've got to give speeches. I would give scores of speeches a year. You're trying to sell tickets. You're trying to ingratiate yourself and your team into your community. You're trying to get corporate sponsors. You're traveling around your market, seeing all kinds of people in all kinds of places. I had to be more vanilla than I've ever had to be as team president, and it didn't work every time. I had many a moment where what I said caused problems, but never caused my termination, not because the owner was my family. That's not why. Do you know that if I had done anything, and I've told you this, if I ever did anything that I thought would stop the Marlins from increasing in value or stop the Marlins from winning a game on a particular day, I wouldn't need to be fired. I'd resign because I knew at the end of the day what my job was very simply. My job was to lose as little money as possible year over year and to have the team worth more next year than it is this year. And if possible, lead a team that can win as many games as possible. That's your job as team president. So Kevin Mather is the president of the Mariners, and he gave a speech on February 5th to the Rotary Club. Let me explain to you what a Rotary Club is. It's a bunch of people who may buy season tickets or a group night. Okay, we've gotten that out of the way. Second, the speech was not in person. It was on Zoom, the way things happen during the pandemic. As you know, when you are on Zoom, as you know, when you're giving a speech, as you know, when you're on social media, as you know, when you're walking through your own ballpark, people are taping you, people are watching you, people are waiting. That's what we do. We wait for people to make a mistake and the people who survive are the people not who are not controversial, but who are controversial in areas where there can actually be controversy. 
People on the right side of the political spectrum talk about cancel culture. They talk about it as though this is a new thing today. I like that, cancel culture. It's always existed. There are certain things you cannot do and cannot say, even if you think them. So I want to tell you that in 2012, the Marlins were opening a ballpark. And I tell you everything on Nothing Personal. Everything is available. I'm an open book to you. Much different than I was as president of the Marlins, where I had a job to do. Now my job is to communicate to you and have you communicate with me. And I love it. Couldn't be happier or more honored. In 2012, I gave a speech to a chamber of commerce, I think, or a business forum or a rotary club. I can't remember what it was. And my comments became front page news. At the time, we had, we were opening Marlins Park, which was a very controversial deal. It was a ballpark where we secured financing for about 70% of the park in a public-private partnership where Jeffrey Loria put in 30% of the money. It was a good deal for the Marlins and a good deal for the community in my mind, not paid for, and I'm not defending it right now. That would take 10 shows and I'm over it. But it was financed with tourist tax dollars and money that by definition had to go to a ballpark or a convention center, could not go to teachers, could not go to police, could not go to firemen, could not go to solve budget crises. I always said, if you want to change that, go to the legislature in Tallahassee and change it. But don't blame me for playing within the rules. It's like me blaming the Yankees for acting the way they do and having the payroll they do, but they're not breaking any rules. So how can I blame them? So I met this group, I gave a speech, and what I said was negotiating against the county and the city, it was not as difficult as people are giving me credit. The community wanted a team. And the community was clear, and the mayor was clear, and was elected on the platform of wanting a team. And I said something to the effect of, you know, we are the smartest people in the room. And what I was referring to is that people in business are generally more able to do business than people in politics. People in politics are way better at being political than the people in business. The best politicians understand business, the best business people understand politics. But I got criticized because the thought was, that I was being intellectually snobby toward politicians and toward the people of Miami, much like what happened at the Levitard show years later. When you are in public and when you are a known voice and face and you're going to be as close to the third rail as I live and have always lived, there can be an issue. But there's certain things that I'll never say because I don't think them. And my commitment to you on nothing personal is whatever I think I'm gonna say because I know deep down my core values, my core philosophies, and I know the difference between right and wrong, and I know what I did was right. Why is Kevin Mather in so much trouble? People are writing articles. People are going crazy. Coca sent it to me last night, yesterday afternoon, and said, this is the lead tomorrow. And I said, I've done, I'm working on the show. That's not my lead. I don't even think it'll make the show. Coca said, just you wait. Just you wait. Of course, it's the lead of the show. Of course, Coca knows what he's doing. And I'm a talking head. That's it. I'm David Byrne. Thank you, Coca. So he meets the... Rotary Club on February 5th, by the way. He talks about the following topics. Fascinating. Number one, he's got a top prospect we acquired from the Mets for Edwin Diaz. Gave Robinson Cano to the Mets and got back Jared Kelnick. I have, I, can't, I never, I don't know how to spell his name. I just know he shouldn't have been traded because he's a top prospect and now one of the top prospects in baseball. Kevin Mather, in a moment of honesty that I completely appreciate, said he's not going to be up until April. 
late April. The reason why he's not going to be up, he said he needs a few at-bats at AAA Tacoma. That's called service time manipulation because he's ready to be in the big leagues right now. Service time manipulation has been covered on this show. We all do it. We all did it. He acknowledged it. I've acknowledged it. If you want to fix it, fix it in the collective bargaining agreement, period. No problem there, Kevin. You're doing fine. COVID-19 was tough, but we were smart. We didn't lose nearly as much money as some other teams. We're in a great position. I wouldn't have said it because it would raise the expectations for a team that hasn't made the playoffs in a record in the longest of MLB. It's like 20 years, 21 years. When the Marlins made the playoffs, the Mariners now have the longest streak in all of baseball, although they had the longest streak also. The, the Marlins were longest in the NL. Mariners were longest in NL. Don't say you've got more money available because you don't have a good team. And you're not going to have a winning season or make the playoffs. But again, we're not near the rail. The Rotary Club speech continues. He then talks about something even more unbelievable. The Seattle Mariners have an employee named Ichiro. Ichiro is an assistant. Ichiro is the single most famous Mariner, along with Felix Hernandez, in the history of the franchise. Now, you could say it's Ken Griffey. You could say it's Randy Johnson. You could say it's Alex Rodriguez. I'm going Felix Hernandez and Ichiro. Hard stop. Are we good? Probably not, because that's when they were successful. You're going to say with Griffey and Johnson and A-Rod and everybody else, but Ichiro and Felix. Ichiro comes to Seattle from Japan. And he has an interpreter. His name is Alan. He worked with us in Miami. I'm in touch with Alan to this day. Ichiro does speak English. But Ichiro wants to make sure that when he talks, he has understood the new and the nuance of what he says is not lost on the media or the fans. And to speak in nuance, you have to have a command of a language that even some people who English is their only language don't have. Don't begrudge each row that. Don't begrudge anybody that. The union in baseball recently negotiated that a Spanish-speaking translator, an English-Spanish-speaking translator, has to be on staff full-time in order to provide translation for all of the Spanish-speaking players on a team. It is not uncommon to have one, two, even three interpreters in your traveling party, depending on the makeup of your team. $75,000, let's just say that that is the amount that an interpreter would make. When we were negotiating to sign Ichiro as a free agent, we knew whatever we paid Ichiro, we had to hire an interpreter. You negotiate, you negotiate, but at the end of the day, you know you want an Ichiro, you want any Japanese player, any Japanese player, you are going to be employing an interpreter. Kevin Mather is bringing in a longtime Seattle Mariners player, former player, to be a special assistant, to be a scout, to be a translator, and told the story about his hiring, Iwakuma is his name, and said, we were not going to hire him an interpreter. I was tired of paying an interpreter $75,000. And you know what? When we told him that, all of a sudden his English got a lot better. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Let's see what else Kevin said. Did he double down? He started talking about Julio Rodriguez, their number one prospect. A kid from the Dominican. Instead of talking about him as a player, him as a man, young man, his future, his prospects. One of the first things he said is, and you know what? He's got a bigger personality than any of you here, but his English is terrible. Strike two. Kevin Mather gave a speech on February 5th where he basically insulted anyone who didn't speak English. People are going to say, you're overreacting, David. This is part of your cancel culture. This is you being political. No, it's not. This is me telling you that if you have a president of a team 
who doesn't understand certain things that can and cannot be said. He cannot be the president of your team. Period. The fallout has been swift because Kevin Mather, this is not his first issue. Kevin Mather in 2018 was investigated and accused for inappropriate workplace behavior, sexual harassment. He was not let go. It was his own executive assistant, by the way, which is, it shouldn't be anybody, period. We know that. My executive assistant has been with me since 2002. People are who they are. It wouldn't even occur to me to be that way. God, I've been accused of a lot of things in my life. Smug, annoying, talkative, short, privileged, entitled. It's one thing that has never been said. Not racist, not prejudice. Don't engage in harassment. Try to do what's right, even when I know I've got a job to do. So Kevin had that strike against him. And here we are with another issue. And the Mariners have a problem. And the reason the Mariners have a problem is that the avalanche has commenced, folks. National writers are calling for his resignation and termination. Local writers are calling for his resignation or termination. The fan base is calling for his resignation or termination. The owner of the team is a guy named John Stanton. Used to be, he's pretty new. Loyal to Kevin Mather. What do you do? If you're John Stanton, is this it? Is it finally the time? Is it three strikes and he's out? John Stanton called Kevin Mather and told him he's got to put out a statement. John Stanton, unfortunately, does not download and subscribe to nothing personal. Kevin Mather, unfortunately, does not listen to enough nothing personals because his apology was written by a PR firm. And it's not nearly good enough. I want to apologize to every member of the Seattle Mariners organization, especially our players and to our fans. Nope. How many times, folks? Say it with me. I want to apologize to the people who I have offended. You start with them and then you apologize to all others. Especially to players and fans. Apologize specifically to the people who you sexually harassed. Apologize specifically to the people who you offended. There is no excuse for my behavior. He continued, and I take full responsibility for my terrible lapse in judgment. Is it a lapse in judgment? Maya Angelou has a great quote about this, Coca, and I just thought of it right now. Oh, God, I'm so sorry that we didn't prepare this. Maya Angelou said that People are who they are, and they say what they say, and then they apologize, but you should pay attention to what they said in the beginning because that is more of a reflection of who they are. I am not quoting her directly. That is my recollection of the Maya Angelou quote. And Coke, I'm not asking you to go find it. My comments were my own. I love that. People on Twitter say that. My comments are my own. Coke, are you reading me the quote? When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Is that Maya Angelou? That's interesting if I somehow, uh, that is, okay. I was close, Coca. When someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. That's my view of apologies, by the way. But we got to continue because it just gets better. My comments were my own. That's like on Twitter when people say when they work for a company, my tweets are my own. Of course your tweets are your own. And by the way, of course, I'm not representing my company. Do you think that CBS calls me and says, hey, hey, Samson, hey, could you tweet out that we're going to cancel Kevin Can Wait in 2018 because the ratings suck? Can you do that? No, my tweets are my own, obviously. My comments are my own. Then the statement that the PR firm makes every employee do. My comments were my own. They do not reflect the views and strategy of the Marlins baseball leadership who are responsible for decisions about the development and status of the players at all levels of the organization. Holy crap. He's apologizing for talking about service time manipulation. That's what he thinks Rob Manford needs him to apologize for. He think that's what the owner, John Stanton, needs him to apologize for is comments about the fact that they're holding down players 
and the reality that there's a collective bargaining agreement that is about to be negotiated, does he think for one second that every single player and every single owner and every single fan doesn't know their service time manipulation? Is it possible that the PR firm and John Stanton could be so out of it and out of touch that they think that's what he should be apologizing for? Third paragraph. I've been on the phone most of the day today apologizing to the many people I have insulted, hurt, or disappointed in speaking at a recent online event. A, it's not relevant that it was online. B, when you say I've been on the phone most of the day apologizing, what you're saying really is, God, what a pain in the ass today has been. I had no idea. I had plans. I did this February 5th, and all of a sudden it gets leaked today on a random February 21st. I was hanging out with the family, doing something, golfing, whatever I was doing. And then I had to immediately change my plans and start picking up the phone. I had to make a list. I had to call my PR guy. I had to call my owner. Who do I start with? And then the finale of the statement. I am committed to make amends for the things I said that were personally hurtful. And I will do whatever it takes to repair the damage I've caused to the Seattle Mariners organization. End of statement. I'm not going to resign. By the way, when he resigns, it'll be because he was terminated. I'm committed to make amends. I wonder if all the women in the Seattle Mariners organization feel that way. I wonder if all the people who he offended in terms of language. Do you know how hard it is? You know what's bothering me a little bit, Coco, about this? Julio Rodriguez is a top prospect. He's a kid. We are responsible as team presidents and GMs and owners. We don't give a rat's ass about these players when they're 40. And I've talked about it and it makes me crazy. It is a huge regret of mine over 18 years. We bring these kids from the Dominican and we throw them into a professional life as professional athletes. And we say, hey, you've got wings, fly. We're gonna give you English lessons. Good luck. We're going to give you help paying bills, maybe teach you how to get utilities. Oh, God, it's so horrible to think about what we do. They're kids. Do you know what Julio Rodriguez did other than moving to the United States to become a baseball player and learning English by himself and how proud he is to have the, the capabilities that he has to do interviews in English right now? I told you as a law school graduate. And as someone who did business in France, the first interview I ever did as a team executive vice president of Montreal was in French in my ear, and I was shaking nervous. And I had been media trained. We bring over these kids and we make them meet the media. We make them talk to the media and the media is waiting to catch them. Make a story. <sighs> I think the damage that has been done, in my opinion, is too big right now. I think they held on to Kevin Mather as long as they could after what happened in 2018. I think that everyone knows that we all have these jobs until we make a mistake that will cost us our job. Some of us are better at avoiding mistakes than others. And it helps if you don't have that view in the first place that will cause you to be immediately terminated. Wait to see, folks. Kevin Mather will not survive this. He can't. He will be terminated slash resign before the start of the season. The avalanche is going to be too great. And it's going to be painful for John Stanton to do. But he's going to realize when he speaks to his corporate sponsors, when he speaks to his fan base, when he speaks to the commissioner, when he speaks to his players and manager and general manager, he will realize he will have no other choice because none of us, not one of us is indispensable.